big warm welcome back now. He's one of the most trusted consumer rights lawyers in the country. Dean Dunham is here to solve your consum consumer concerns in today's phone-in. So let's get straight to our Hi, first Dean. caller. Um, hello, Dean. Good um, we've got Rebecca on the line. Now, Rebecca, you were sold a faulty car, is that right? That's correct. Um, and can you explain your story to Dean, please? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Um, so basically, we bought a car, my partner and I, at the end of July. Um, from a used car dealership. We were sold an extended warranty with it, so we thought we were pretty well protected. Um, and there was some black smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe when we bought it, and we were told it's just been sat a while, but don't worry, you have the warranty. So off we tootled home after we purchased it via debit card, went home, and within a week, it, it failed to start. Um, we had to get the breakdown recovery service to come out, who then had to take it to an independent garage for us to try and get it diagnosed properly. Um, and since then, basically, we've been out of pocket with no car. The um, used car uh, dealership has refused to take any of our calls now, um, so saying they don't what do refunds. What a nightmare. Sorry to hear yeah. that, Rebecca. So, what yeah. she do? Well, there's lots she can do. I mean, this is the most common problem we have in the consumer world, actually. Oh, really? It is the most complained about issue we see. I'm going to tell you something now because there is something that car dealerships up and down the country do not want you to know. And I'm going to tell everybody the, the whole thing. The Consumer Rights Act is the law which is applicable. And under the Consumer Rights Act, we have something called the short-term right to reject. And what that says is that if goods, including cars, if they are faulty within the first 30 days after delivery, and that's the issue you've got here, you can get the keys, give them back and demand your money back. They know that, they know you've got that right, but they don't want you to know that. Have you gone back and mentioned the word short-term right to reject, or have I just told you about that? Did you not know about it before? Um, I literally found some information online through Systems Advice, and I copied one of their templates and actually sent it to um, the dealership via recorded delivery. Um, but again, we've, we've not heard any, anything back from them, and so I just feel a bit lost now as where to go. What do you do if someone just keeps ignoring you, then? Uh, it happens yeah. every day. So lots of these car dealerships and other traders are ignoring consumers. It's a problem. How did you pay for this car? Um, it was by a debit card. OK, thank God you said by a debit card. This is what I'm telling everyone to do, and here's why. We have something called the chargeback scheme, and it works where there's been a breach of contract. Now, of course, if under the law, the Consumer Rights Act, you are entitled to your money back and here your car dealership fails to give the money back, that means there's a breach of contract. So that means you can do this chargeback. Here's what I want you to do next. Go to your bank, tell them you want to make a chargeback on your debit card. This bit's important. Make sure you say there has been a breach of contract. Those words are really important because that's what's going to be mean you're going to get a successful chargeback. So what happens next? They give your money back. They'll transfer the money back into your bank account. They will then go to this car dealership and say, we have transferred money back here. What do you have to say about it? And let's face it, what are they going to say about it? There's no defence. Mm. This car's faulty. They should have um, accepted what I call the short-term right to reject. They haven't. Therefore, it's a breach of contract. And well, it's an easy answer. Really Great news, yeah. actually. Is it, would it have been better if she'd have paid on a credit card or does it not really matter? No, actually, it, it wouldn't. It, it would have been better if it was a credit card if this had happened down the line, yeah. if, say, three, four, five months. And the reason for that is that with a debit card, you have to make this chargeback claim within 120 days. With a credit card, there's no such time limit. I see. You've so it doesn't matter. Way. But the chargeback's a better thing to do because they literally just press a button, move the money back into your account, and then they take the fight up here with the car dealership. That's I never so knew nice. about chargeback. Did, did you know about chargeback, Rebecca? No, not at all. I'm feeling a lot more positive now. I bet. Yeah. That's a good news. Rebecca, you then. are going to get your money back. There is no doubt about it. I just want to say this, though. If, they, if your bank says no, and often they do, and I tell people every week, when a bank says no to a chargeback claim, go back and ask again. If they say no again, that's why we've got the Financial Ombudsman Service, to go to them and make a complaint. But there's one more thing I want you to do, and please make sure you do this. Go to the okay. Trading Standards Office, local to that garage, and complain. More people need to do this 
trading standards are always interested in complaints about car dealerships. Yeah, and it helps other people further down the yeah, line so they does. have to go through, because it's stressful. I mean, forget about the money side of things, that's horrible, but also the stress and thinking and worrying about it. Yeah. Um, Rebecca, thank you Good for your luck. call. I feel yeah. like that's going to help lots of people today. Diane's on the line next. Hi, Diane. Oh, good morning. Hello, good, morning. good to talk to you. You've got a, a call about uh, an airline and de delayed flights. Yes, I took a, well, I was supposed to have taken a flight on the 12th of June and it didn't actually take off until the 13th um, and put in a complaint and received nothing back apart from a couple of automated emails to say, sorry, it's taken so long. And the last time they contacted me was the 30th of June. OK, so you just not you wanted something, something to be done about this, but just not hearing back. This year, yeah. we've had chaos at the airports up and down the country, which means we've got lots of people making claims for delayed flights, cancelled flights. And it's no surprise that the airlines are just not answering the phones. Some of it's because they are inundated with phone calls. Some of it's because they don't want to answer the phones. They don't want to pay compensation. But look, the situation here is the first thing we need to establish is what was the cause of the delay? And the reason I say that is that, t generally speaking, if you arrive at your final destination three or more hours late, it means, on the face of it, you're entitled to compensation. That compensation sometimes is more than the cost of the ticket. So it can be really good. But, as with everything, there, is, or there are some exceptions. So we've got something called extraordinary circumstances. Many people that have made a claim to an airline would have seen these words littered all over their response. They'll say, no, we're not paying out. It's extraordinary circumstances. What that means is that if the cause of the delay or the cancellation, if it was a cancellation for other viewers watching, was down to something which was not under the control, not in the control of the airline. Let me give us examples of this. Air traffic control strikes, um, problems with the weather, adverse weather, those sorts of things that the airline just cannot control in those circumstances, these airlines do not have to pay compensation. But I pause there for a moment because some of these airlines tell you, oh, it's extraordinary circumstances, it was, this was the reason. But when you dive into it, you find, actually, it's not. That's not the real reason. So even if your airline says to you, it's extraordinary circumstances, it's this reason, don't always take that as read. So here, what you need to do is go back to them and say, please tell me what was the cause of the delay? And also, I want you to do this. Go back to them and say, if you do not come back to me and provide me with compensation, pay me out the money I, I'm entitled to, I now want to go to your alternative dispute resolution. That's ADR provider. Um, if it's a UK-based airline, they almost certainly subscribe to one. Many of the European airlines are as well. And what this means, it's an independent body that looks at your complaints, looks at what the airline says, normally has a bit more access to information than what you as a passenger has got, and they hopefully will find out was it really extraordinary circumstances or was that's it not? So good. And that's what you need to do. Lots of people, when they go down this road, they get paid their compensation. Wow. Oh, I... Diane, good news <laughs> again. Like, at least it gives you somewhere to go, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because the only thing that you can do at the moment is talk to a chat online bot thing yeah. that, you know... Who wants so, to talk to a robot? And that's the problem. Yeah. I, Diane, I should also say, how did you pay for this? I mean, it's always got to be a question we ask in these things. Um, again, it was. I'm pretty sure it was a debit card. So um, I was listening earlier. Mm. Um, so maybe I can claim it back that way. Yep. Um, so if you paid within the last 120 days, again, there is a clear breach of contract if and only if the airline cannot cite this extraordinary circumstances defence. That's you, key. I would find that out first mm -hmm. before making the chargeback claim. But I will say this. The regulator here, the Civil Aviation Authority, does not like airlines refusing or delaying payments to passengers. So sometimes it's good to complain to them. But the reason I'm saying this, whilst they're taking a long time to refund this money or, or pay this compensation, if it's due, I think you'll find they will pay it. OK. Dean, okay. you're so good. I know, brilliant. Yeah, I hope that helps, Diane. Thanks, Diane. Um, um, next, we've got Dylan. Now, the school, um, the school shoes I ordered never made it to me. I ordered uh, school shoes for my daughter online and they have not arrived. The retailer says they had been delivered and, and they sent a GPS tracker. Apparently, the courier was in the car park at our block of flats and the complaint has since been closed. I did not get the shoes. I cannot now afford to buy new shoes and I'm really desperate and I don't know what to do. 
do. There's that would stress me. Yeah. Out. If I didn't yeah. get Reggie's school shoes I in know. time, yeah. I'm, what can I'm she do? I'm telling you, there are many people at home watching this saying that's happened to me. I'm yeah. in that situation now. We all buy online. There are millions and millions of orders that go through couriers every single day, and many of them get lost. And what happens is the courier says, nope, not my problem. Look at the GPS. There's some good news here. Because that's not enough. Again, I come back to this law I mentioned a moment ago, the Consumer Rights Act. We got this new law in 2015, so it's still relatively new. But one of the great things in here is it talks about at what stage does the retailer lose its responsibility for goods? Um, and pass it over to you as consumer. Mm. Guess what it says? Well, I don't know. No? no. Otherwise, I'd be sat there. Come on, you know, there's a cliffhanger. I really want to know this. It says something really good. It says, until those goods are in your possession, they are at the risk of the retailer. I love it. So what that means is, just because they can show a GPS tracker in a Doesn't car park count. somewhere, that's not in your possession. Take a photo. That's exactly what they've got that. to take a photo. I was about to say, ever seen the courier taking a yeah. photo of the yeah. goods on the floor and off your feet? <laughs> it's not because they like your shoes. No, that's but... not why they're doing it. It's <laughs> because... I oh, did that happen to me once, and I went, oh, I haven't even done my makeup. I look <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> No, just the parasol will do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he wanted a photo of me. Oh, <laughs> it was a wasted opportunity. Of his. Did they got. get your shoes? Uh, I, no, I got my parasol, but I thought he honestly wanted a photo of me. It's a bit embarrassing. Well, yes. look, if they take the photo, your front door's open, yeah. or yeah. your recognisable shoes or flip flops are yeah. in the picture, that's good evidence the parcel has been delivered. It's your problem. If they don't, and it ends up in the car park with a GPS tracker, not enough. Let me just tell you another quick story. Many people tell me, oh, the retailer said, or the courier said, they put it in my wheelie bin. That's not good enough either. That's not good enough way. either. It's just crazy. OK, yeah. I feel like we've only scratched the surface here. Can you come back and do lots oh, more yeah. of these? Yes, <laughs> please, please do. That was amazing. You're so good, Dean. Yeah, yeah I loved yeah. it. Really, Thank really you. enjoyed that. Thank, Thank you. you. Um,